Northwestern State in the road blacks. As we mentioned, you can see that ball already being moved by the wind. Partly cloudy here on a Sunday afternoon, and we are underway here from the Alamo City. Northwestern State, second currently in the Southland Conference with a record of 6-2-2, two and two, trying to come out early and make a statement with a early goal and a foul there on Eve Clarkson just outside the box will give a free kick to the Demons. Anytime there's crazy wins involved, that's where turnovers happen. That's where those unexpected goals come from. And I think, you know, it would definitely be to the Cardinals' advantage to try to play longer balls, try to get up, uh, you know, towards the side of the field and, and take advantage of that wind and the speed that will help them get into the attack much quicker. Now, of course, we've got a uh, set piece coming here. Natalie Henry to take the free kick, and it goes right into the chest of Coffrin. Great Good. save there from Coffrin. Great save in the right place at the right time. Secure hands. It's looking good from her side this afternoon. Cardinals now trying to find some offense. Shut out in the loss versus A&M Commerce. And they're going to have to do it without their leading goal scorer, Keely Ayala. Six goals and two assists on the year. It's really unfortunate to hear as Keely is a senior. So I'm sure she's especially missing this, this last game for the Cardinals. Cardinals with on the attack. Deanna Hillhorst gives it away as that one gets pressed up by the Lady Demons. I can see Ayala. I don't want to speculate that she is injured, but she is over there on the bike. So maybe she'll try to give it a go today. One of those six seniors for the Cardinals recognized before the game. Last game, it looked like she had her quad wrapped. Ooh, difficult challenge there going up against the keeper. Again, cleats up. Let's see this replay here. Ball in, not a bad idea at all from that back line. And of course, running through the challenge. You could see she was going for the ball. It wasn't fully cleats up. It's just an unfortunate challenge there. Hannah Walsh there trying to poke that one over the goalie. Chloe DeShazer, but DeShazer does a good job of securing that one and definitely paid the price for it at the same time. Ball bouncing into the box and cleared away there by Peyton Adams. Celebrated a birthday on Friday. We didn't get to get that note in on the broadcast. So ha happy belated birthday to Peyton Adams. Hopefully had a good birthday and maybe get a win here on senior night for yourself as well. Yeah, happy birthday, Peyton. Throwing for the Demons. Goes deep into the box. Headed there and clobbered by Coffrin. Definitely have seen Coffrin be very secure. Now the Cardinals on the counterattack. Sierra Wanamaker into the box and flag is up. Had a shot on goal, but got a little too far behind the defense. Look at this play development here, though. Yes, she was a little bit off sides, but I mean, the idea is there. The runs, the checks, I mean, the way they made it into that opposing half with speed. It's a good-looking Cardinals team this afternoon. When we had talked to Coach Gore, he kind of expected and wanted to have that mentality of playing 
the Cardinals as if it was that championship game that they played just a year ago. Sees the Cardinals as a much better team than their record shows. And they're coming out hot today, playing loose and free so far. Well, if you look at their record, they haven't had any crazy blowout losses, really. I mean, they're, that's the thing about soccer. It's a, only a few points to differentiate you from going up or down. And so, uh, you know, you got to hand it to this Cardinal team. They show up, they show out, they give their best. And sometimes that's just the way the chips fall. Another throw in for Northwestern State team that leads the Southland in shots, third in goals. Obviously, can't win games if you can't score the ball. That's basically been the difference between the Lady Demons and the Cardinals. And you can see it in the box score as everyone on the Demon squad is getting in on the action. Almost 80% of their roster has at least a goal or assist. I mean, that, when I look at a team and and I see that on their stat sheet, that to me is a formidable force because you can't just pinpoint a single player and, and decide how to defend around them when every single player can put it in the back of the net or is responsible for creating danger in the attacking third. Um, it makes it really hard, you know, to just kind of formulate a game plan at times with teams like that. And obviously when you have a Southland Conference Player of the Year player like Olivia Drugisevich, who has nine goals on the year, you would think that, oh, it's it's just a one-woman show, but it's definitely not the case. Not the case at all, although she is leading the pack and quite the incredible player. I mean, Still, again, she has a great support system. And you see that time and time again, especially as players, you know, talking about the professional level. Let's even, like, talk about men's soccer at the professional level, right? You have, you know, the European leagues and you have American soccer. And how often have you seen a big European star come over to the MLS and they can't produce? And a lot of times it's because of who is surrounding them and, and the style of play and maybe, you know, the system that they're in isn't quite working. And so when you see these players who have incredible accolades and, and a ton of goals racked up, it's because of the people around them that are feeding them these balls and, and making them, you know, so successful. Throwing now for the Demons, going into the wind. As an offensive player, how difficult is it going into the wind versus playing with the wind? Well, playing with the wind, you have the speed going with you. So you know you better book it when you see a long ball uh, coming your way. On the, on the flip side, it's hard to judge because if the wind is against you, you don't know if the ball is going to drop. Um, so when the wind is against you, it's almost better to play on the ground, driven balls into feet you know, having the strikers and forwards check back to receive the ball. So it's, you know, you're playing slightly different depending on the half and the way the wind is working with or against you. There's Armstrong going down the far sideline and that one goes off the foot of Eve Clarkson. Deflected out, but a corner kick for the Demons. Despite being with the wind being against them, it, it seems that they're still finding ways to get up in the attack. Demons not only lead the conference in corners, but the NCAA in corners per game and second in total corners. Here's one played into the box and a goal. A nice service in from Natalie Henry. And that one is on the opposite side. Headed in from nat number 13, Haley Field, for an early demon goal. Fantastic work there. And something we had mentioned was winning those 50-50s. And that's one of those places where uh, 
You definitely got to win those 50-50s. And I mean, if you look at the cross, at 30, the ball went a little bit half, further back instead of 13, in front of the goal. Field. And it's great on her to read that, knowing that the wind was involved, knowing that most likely the ball would be a, a little bit further out. And then, of course, heading it in. Also, wind might have worked to your advantage there. If you're heading it up and over the goal and the wind is working against you, sometimes it drops the ball quickly, makes it hard for the keeper to read. Either way, fantastic goal there. Fourth goal of the year for Haley Field. And the fourth assist of the year for Natalie Henry. Nothing Margaret Coffrin could have really done. Got a hand on it and just couldn't get it over, up and over that crossbar. Right, again, it's always hard to read when the ball um, is coming kind of up and over. There's a lot of traffic in the line of sight for these keepers. And again, just down an early goal, which is always so unfortunate for the Cardinals. We saw this happen in the last game, but you know, after those two goals, it was a 0-0 game. And so I think if they can just keep their mentality in it, switch on and stay switched on, that you know, there's still a chance for them. Gracie Armstrong wins another corner kick for the Lady Demons. Just a minute after they capitalized on the set piece. Can they do it once again? Natalie Henry, graduate from Tomball, Texas, will take the corner kick again. This one's played a little further outside the six and that one unable to find the Lady Demon as Eve Clarkson will clear that one away towards midfield. Wise clearance there, especially with so many black jerseys in that area. And of course the wind creating some havoc here. It's, it's always better to just play it safe and clear it out in situations like that. Demons on that one goal going from Henry to field shows their experience as a team that has 11 seniors and grad students second most experienced team in the Southland only behind Lamar who has 13 and it's one of those things that it seems like experience this year has proven to be the key factor in teams that have done well as Lamar leads in the conference standings there at first place. Experience is everything in college soccer because people don't realize just the physical transition that these athletes have to go through from high school into college. The demands are significantly different than high school. Speed of play is different. You're up against the best of the best versus a lot of these players in high school were the best, you know, so it's just it's an entirely different environment. And um, not only that, these senior uh, teams with all of this experience, they have time together, time to learn each other and what works and what doesn't. And and you would think, oh, that can happen in a season, but really and truly, it, it does take time, no matter who's on your squad. Down the far sideline is Deanna Hillhorst. And across there, blocked by number can't see the jersey number. Looks like it was number 15, Madison Murphy. And that one out of bounds on the Cardinals, throwing for the Demons. It's crazy to think about this too. Demons return 89% of their goal production from last season. Wow. And obviously, a lot of that has to do with Olivia Dragicevic, but as we mentioned, when you can add so many pieces around her and have so much depth top to bottom, it makes it very easy to go on one of those defending national or defending conference championship runs. Yeah, coach, uh, head coach Stuart Gore really walked into an already quality program last year and then just adding in his you know personal touch that it just seems like this team has all the pieces that they need to be really successful they have you know 
an incredible season last season and a great season this season. Great coach, great players, senior leadership. What more could you ask for? I mean, it's there's a reason that this team is circled on the schedule for everyone in this conference. As you mentioned, Coach Gore in his second season. Long ball played into the box. Unable to track that one down was Emily Mojia. Excuse me, Moje. Moje now has it on the 18. Goes near side, tries to tap it back and out of bounds there. Trying to find Caroline Hilliard. It'll be a throw in for the Cardinals. Just an unlucky touch there from uh, Hilliard, but Coach Stuart Gore did mention that she is one of those old school players in the way that she plays, very no nonsense. She actually comes from a military family, so I think she kind of brings that personality to the field, and that's exactly the kind of player that you want there on your back line. Only a sophomore in a sea of senior players, but again, when you bring that kind of maturity just from the get-go, you I can guarantee you this is going to play going to be a player that you're going to see develop and change. She's going to be one of those leaders most likely on the back line in seasons moving forward. Jamie Hayes with the service in being deflected around. Armstrong now trying to chase it down and Eve Clarkson wins the ball there. And just a through ball, unable to find a Cardinal as it begin, begins to be played back and forth between the two. As we were mentioning, just a hot start for Coach Gore. 21-9-5, just in his second year as the head coach. Only two wins behind Jess and Anna Job for the most wins in the coach's first two years at Northwestern State. And with the win today, it'll get him to one with one more regular season game to be played on Friday. So he could easily be the winningest head coach in his first two seasons if all goes right for the Lady Demons down the stretch. Little counterattack for the Cardinals trying to play a ball into Sierra Wanamaker and almost finds that one. Wanamaker was so close there. You could see her frustration. Great through ball. Running on to it so close. And only just a couple inches out of touch. If she had maybe gotten a toe on the end of that, it, it might have snuck past the keeper there. But if they continue that kind of effort, you might see a goal here coming up soon. Madison Murphy was there on Wanamaker. Cardinals unable to connect there. Nice pass there, just out of the reach of Paige Armstrong. Unlucky turnover there in the midfield for the Cardinals. That's where that pace on the ball makes, makes all the difference and just really staying connected. And again, that's something that comes um, as you build with time. So we know this team is new, they're rebuilding. Looked like on that cross, the wind got the best of it. And, and as you can see here, it, it's the same. You know, sometimes the forwards can't judge it. Even a single pass, you can't judge it because the wind really does create some chaos. What would you rather play with, going into the wind or going against the wind? Obviously, you have to play both sides. You'll have to switch at half, but... I'd rather play with the wind, I think. You know, just because you just have to adjust to understanding don't hit it as hard, um, you know, or like 
maybe do hit it as hard as you can and let the wind carry it for you. You know, that's where those moments come from, you know, the center backs into the into the forwards for them to run onto space, you know, moments like that where they can find a long chip in. There's been a couple of times where the Cardinals have come up the side of the field and they had an opportunity to chip it to the opposite back side of the back line and they have almost always a player camped out and open there. So I think if they can pick up on that and use their win- the win to their advantage right now in this first half, that they might be able to uh, catch the Lady Demons back line off guard. Throw in here from... Caroline Hilliard. Cardinals had trouble with those throw-ins against Commerce. And they're able to play this one out. Escape the danger there. Demons still pressing here. Ball on the far side, crossed in on the ground. Intercepted there from Eve, Eve Clarkson. Good job by Clarkson. Another senior trying to end her Cardinal career on a high note. You saw a header from Clarkson there into the head of Delaney Wales and something that Coach had mentioned prior to the game also is that she's one of those players that really commands the center of the field and she'll go for a 50-50 battle versus the Hulk if she has to. I mean, he said if a plane dropped a ball, she would head it. And as you can see there, she has that headband on. So something tells me she's had a couple of collisions in her day. And uh, when I think about players who are really good out of the air on both squads, I think of Wells and um, I think of Eve Clarkson. Wells has started all 15 games coming into this one, only out of the game for 22 minutes, a staple for the Lady Demons. Even adds two goals on the year. So not as not only is she dependable on the defensive side, but also the offensive side. And that's exactly what you want from your, your center backs. I mean, they're those players that I think a lot of credit sometimes is given to like the number nines on the field, the strikers, the forwards who get all the goals and the accolades. But I think the players with the highest IQ tend to be the center backs. Great transition here, great breakaway, and it was so close. Oh man, if she had started that run just a smidgen sooner, it could have been different. It looks like a Chloe tough collision. Chloe DeShazer comes off her mark. The replay here. Look at that way, the way she fed the ball through. I mean, fantastic effort there from number seven, Melissa Bailey. Great touch, great service in. Again, I'm sure the wind helped there, but sometimes that wind just carries the ball. Abigail Wilson, freshman from McKinney, Texas. A little shaken up, but Back on her feet, trying to tough this one out. Looks like she'll be okay and stay in the game here. That's the second time that Chloe DeShazer's had to come out and paid the price for it. They knew the Cardinals would be quite the physical team and and I will say their strikers, their forwards, they are relentless. They do not stop. They'll press high and as hard as they can. They will literally use every ounce of energy that they have to just add pressure to the keeper. And it's always a relief when you have a striker like that on, on your team. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been on a team and you play a ball in and, and they just stop. But it's those players you know, especially like Sierra Wanamaker, who adds that pressure up top that converts goals a lot of times. Coach Gore had mentioned they're a very physical team, but it's not in a dirty way. It's very much a, hey, it's within the rules. And they're just going to be a solid team that you're going to you're gonna be battle tested and most likely going to have to use some ice getting the getting on uh, the bus and or the plane, depending on how you get to the game. Going back to that save that Eve Clarkson just made there, 
fantastic effort from her. Instead of just clearing it, she pulled the ball back and carried it up and still looks like a bunch of back and forth here still uh, in the midfield, but you got to hand it to her. And again, here's a replay. She takes the bounce. She pops it through. Fantastic work. I mean, sometimes I wonder if... if uh, 23, Abigail Wilson, had she angled her run a smidgen more, she might have gotten to that a little bit quicker. But again, shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? I think I'm one of those players for sure that I think about all the moments where, man, if I had just done this or that, and then I usually stay up for two nights in a row thinking about it. And I can almost guarantee you that a lot of these players probably do the same. It's easy for us in the box to critique and as well as when it's yeah. already happened. Right. Exactly. And, you know, just going back to my you know, previous spiel I was going on about soccer IQ. I mean, that's why a lot of these soccer players are so intelligent. They have to think really quick and they have to be creative and and analytical at the same time. It's kind of the use of two brains. And when you talk about these players, I'd mentioned, you know, the number nines and the strikers get all these accolades. But really, it's your center backs that have the highest IQ on the field. The attack starts with them. The defense, you know, is completely and almost fully reliant on them. They, com they command the back line. They stay attached to the center midfield. I mean, your center backs and your center mids, I think, um, are some of the strongest players on the team mentally. Just over 19 minutes remain here in the first half. Quick goal. For North, Northwestern NHU. State number 17, broke the ice Haley. early in for 13, as Haley Field, Haley Field found the goal 14, off the service from Natalie Henry. Very UI cool storyline is number 20, Natalie Taylor Henry Warren has a twin sister 20, on the Evan team, Hill Nicole Wilson. Henry, both two, transfers from me. the he University of Texas. But they're not the only down, ones Anna, that have family ties. This Lady Demon team has four sets of sisters, and two of them are twin sisters. <laughs> you got the Henry sisters. You got the Armstrong sisters. You got the Fernandez sisters. And then last but not least, you got the Spitzer sisters. Wow, that is a lot. And I'm sure they're just skewing that average of sisters in the league, just on their team alone. I, I actually asked... Uh, coach uh, Stuart Gore about that if it complicates things or makes things weird and he said no not at all the only thing is that the twins don't like being referred to as the twins and uh, that they will correct you mid-sentence um, if you start messing up their names so that goes to Nicole and Natalie sisters there and uh, he also mentioned how you know a lot of the bigger sisters on the team are just that big sisters they have really a lot of invested interest out there for their their younger siblings and you know just it's, it's a great mentality to have on the team when you have older sisters who've grown up just kind of you know not always putting themselves first and and that's that's what you want from a teammate right here is one of those sisters gracie armstrong almost finds olivia drogisevich for a diving header and it was funny getting to talk to coach gore Gracie Armstrong, a graduate senior, came from Colorado State. Her sister Paige is a freshman, and one of the things of coming here was to get to play with Paige. Very unselfish, and she's having an incredible year. Four goals, five assists on the year. Trying to show her little sister Paige kind of what's up, taking a little bit of an advantage in goals and assists, but it's, very, it's always a super cool thing. I definitely wish that if my sisters and brothers were co closer in age that I would have gotten to play with them too. Oh, me too. Absolutely. I mean, all I can think about is just like getting all the extra practice and extra touches and then just like the level of competition when you are out there in practice or whatever. It's it's just constantly higher, you know, because you you have this person to hold you accountable. Not to mention like they know everything you're going through because they're in your personal life and just having that kind of a support system is something so unique and different and valuable. Definitely very important to have a great support system no matter where you're at 
but especially at this college level we see just how important mental health is at this collegiate level Entering yes i mean the there are players four, i mean Kayla i believe it's Smith. katie myers who was a keeper and ended up Diana taking her Hill her own life and just because of the pressures from from college sports and you know these young athletes again going through such a huge period of transition taking on academics um you know new social circles going away from into a home team, away from home yeah there's so many pressures wondering what you're going to do after college both job wise and and professionally speaking when it comes to your soccer career i mean they have a lot going on and only a few years to figure it out four years might not seem like a short period of time but when you're a senior you you blink and you're like, wow, I thought I was a freshman. <laughs> not, not to mention just the, all the critique of what actually goes on the field, trying to earn playing time, yes. trying to uh, impress not only the coaches, your teammates, but also just the people on social media and us media members. So we try to keep everything super positive as Olivia Dragicevic tries to go for a shot and is tackled there by Eve Clarkson and we're going to have a yellow card and penalty kick for the Lady Demons. Wow, look at this breakaway. Fantastic work there. Unfortunate turnover from the Cardinals. Yes, you see Eve is trying to catch her. It's just she's getting right past her, makes the tackle and I am so surprised she didn't get a red card for that just because she came from behind and it was intentional but lucky for her it was only a yellow and now sitting here with the PK, giving Margaret Coffrin the opportunity to step up big. Gracie Armstrong to take the penalty kick. Armstrong head on with the ball. See where she goes here. Comes to her left and goes to the lower right hand corner. And it'll be in the back of the net, another goal for the Lady From Demons. Eight, and watching this replay here, you can see she's Armstrong. trying to pick up and read which way she's going to go. She fakes the left really pass. well and just places it right Lady there Demons in that, that open netting. And man, definitely not a position that these keepers want to be in. Still 15 minutes plus to go, 2-0 here in the first half. Gracie Armstrong gets her fifth goal on the year, second most on the team behind Olivia Dragicevic. And the one-two punch with Armstrong and Dragicevic is one of the best in the conference come into today's game. Combined 13 goals on the year, second most by a school in a conference only trailing Lamar and a &M Corpus Christi with the Pair at Lamar being Kratia and Ellis having 18 goals and Morgan Westbury and Megan Guy there for the Islanders at 14. Both have earned Offensive Player of the Week honors this year. Dragistovich had a hat trick against Jackson State as you had mentioned and the only goal in the first matchup between UIW and the Demons. I mean, when we looked at it going into this game, definitely part of the game plan was getting those quick transitions, those breakaways. And as you can see here, that's, that's exactly what they did. They, you know, just capitalized on winning those 50-50s, capitalized on those quick transitions and breakaways, and it worked. Yeah. Gracie Armstrong won the her Offensive Player of the Week honors just a few weeks ago. Scored four goals and wins over Nichols and Lamar. They were able to upset Lamar, who came into that game undefeated. So we probably will keep... If, if things continue on their path, I think we're going to have a head-on collision between Northwestern State and Lamar, and it'll be so cool to see 
those dynamic duos for both teams go at it, as well as some good defenses. Yes, it's always fun to watch two powerhouses against each other, but sometimes it, you know, it creates one of those games where everybody's so good that, you know, not a ton happens because evenly matched defense, evenly matched offense. Um, I think we saw that with the men's soccer game last night. It was almost hard to pick apart because everything was going really well on both sides. But, you know, it took a minute for for uh, the Cardinals to score and, and take the lead on that one. But Entering for NSU. getting back to this game, I mean, I think it's always hard being too down to in the first half. And, and two, if they can in these Griffin. next 12 it's minutes just eight. bring that tenacity Armstrong. back, keep the wind in their sails, you know, I think it's Ted Lasso who said, be like a goldfish because they have the shortest memory. They're the happiest mammal on the planet. So, um, or animal, rather. Mammal? Animal? I don't animal, know. Animal. animal. <laughs> I don't think a goldfish yeah. is a mammal. Yeah, I'll stick to soccer. I'll stick to soccer on this one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyways, be like a goldfish and forget it even happened. Faith Adams comes into the ball game for the Demons. Takes out number 18, Emily Moje. Demons up 2-0. Team that's second in the Southland Conference. Won the first match between the two. 1-0. Back there in Louisiana. Goal came early from Olivia Drogisevic. In the eighth minute, was assisted by Natalie Henry. Cardinals had to play just about the last 30 minutes a man down as Ellie Mae Sanford picked up two yellows, resulting in that second one being a red. And they're quickly down 2-0 in this one. Off a set piece, corner kick, as Natalie Henry fed a great ball into Haley Fields' header. And then, obviously, just moments ago, Olivia Dragicevic winning a penalty kick that was capitalized there by Gracie Armstrong. Cardinals with the throw in. Just under 10 minutes now. In the first half, trying to find some offense. Obviously still down without their leading goal scorer, Keely Ayala. I genuinely believe that the score line might have been different had Keely been involved in, in Friday's game and, and both in this game. She's just such a force to reckon with, such a powerful, strong athlete. Just her athletic ability in general is impressive. And then, of course, her soccer acumen. She's always involved in a goal. There's a reason she's leading the team uh, in, in goals. And so it's just really unfortunate to have one of your, your best players not in the mix. Lady Demons win another corner here. Be their third corner of the game. Excuse me, fourth. This time, Jalen Donaldson will take it. Punched away there by Coffrin. Well done to get off her mark. And head that one away. And they get that one out of bounds for the time being. Again, you have Delaney Wells. Going up there for that header, making that challenge. Getting that ball back into the possession of the Lady Demons. 
dangerous spot here still for the Cardinals. Caroline Hilliard to throw it in. They had trouble defending those throw-ins against Commerce. They defend it well here. Cleared out, trying to press back up. Oh, look at this throw in. Nice big throw. Met by the Cardinal defense. Building out of the back here. Good idea with the intention they're coming out from up top to receive that driven ball. Just didn't have enough pace on it there. I feel like you can see the sun kind of peeking through the clouds now. It's starting to brighten up as the day progresses. Still some wind in the mix. Nice run out of the back there. And a foul there on the Demons. And a yellow card issued out. And that one will go to number 15, Madison Murphy. Now Peyton Adams to take the free kick. Senior from Frisco, Texas. Puts this one into the box and almost finds a foot. And into the goal is Sierra Wanamaker. Wow, I think, I think the Lady Demons were half expecting uh, that challenge from Tegan Browning to, to put a stop to things. But of course, Wanamaker picked up there off the, the road. The uh, ricochet, and my goodness, great wherewithal there to just stay calm and focused and uh, under pressure. You know, I mean, that's one of those things that senior players bring to a program is, you know, they've been in this position multiple times. And so congratulations there to Sierra Wanamaker for the tipping that six, one in. Sierra Wanamaker's down. fifth goal of the year. Had three in a hat trick versus Texas Southern. Had another off a penalty kick against Houston Christian. Definitely interesting call there because Chloe DeShazer definitely wanted a at least a foul on Tegan Browning because she went feet first into her, leaving the goal wide open for Wanamaker. Right. I almost half expected that call as well. I mean, you saw... All the defenders around her relax, expecting the call. But Sierra Wanamaker stayed switched on, took advantage of that opportunity, and, and placed the ball. And that's exactly why you don't stop until you hear a whistle. Now, this is a great place to be in, five minutes plus going into the second half. And, you know, while they are still down, there, you've got five minutes. Anything can happen in five minutes for one. And for two, I'd rather have you know, close that gap going into the second half versus being two nil. Another look here at that goal. The Shazer comes off her line like she did the previous two times. Didn't get a whistle either time there, but was able to secure the ball this time. Unable to secure the ball, still doesn't get a whistle and it results in a goal. Ball in the box now for the Demons. Unable to get anything on frame there. Yeah, it looked Send like a, a long ball there. Down the near sideline and out of bounds. Looked like a bit of a scramble there from the defensive side of the Cardinals. I mean, ball kind of banging around. And uh, luckily they got it out of there and working their way up the field now. Again, got to hand it to Sierra Wanamaker on that goal. Just a nice, easy volley inside the foot, chipping it over, just maintaining her cool under that pressure and setting up her team for success. Eve Clarkson dribbling the ball up. Tries to find Browning. Browning plays give and go there with Kayla Smith and 
unable to find a cardinal on the other side of that pass as Wanamaker will force DeShazer to pick this one up. DeShazer De trying to run the clock out here in, in any way she can so as not to give enough time for an equalizer as they move into the second half. Sierra Wanamaker moves into the top 10 in goal scoring for the Southland Conference with her fifth goal of the year. Peyton Adams to take this free kick just in front of midfield. Tries to find the head of Eve Clarkson. It's a little too high there. Great service in, just wasn't able to get on the end of it. Cardinals last three minutes with the wind, trying to find an equalizer before halftime. Where the sides of the field will be slipped and the demons will be going with the wind in the second half. How crucial is it just to get a goal here, not only to tie the game, but because you're going to be going into the wind and with a team that has struggled to score, how big is it these last 230 to try and find a goal? It's definitely huge. And, um, you know, both teams have played well this afternoon. And I think, you know, what it comes down to is just taking those opportunities when they're in the box. And a lot of times when you have the wind at your back, you get a few more opportunities and you might, um, if it were the reverse now, something I'm seeing with the Cardinals, there's been a couple of turnovers in the middle of the field. You know, you see these players running into space and 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 these are balls that either they didn't have enough pace or they weren't timed well or too far ahead of the runner or too far behind. And and I think that if they can just work on cleaning that little piece up, which is very, very, very doable, um, they're definitely going to be a really, really dangerous team for the Lady Demons moving into this now. As you can see here, just a minute plus, a little, little under two minutes on the clock, and um, you have your Lady Demons out here shielding the ball, trying to take it to the corner and, and buy themselves some time. Usually you don't see this until the end of the game, um, but that's just one way that a team will try to slow the momentum of the other team, and, and I think that should say something about what the Cardinals uh, have just done here already in this first half. I mean, if you have a team like the Lady Demons, you know, starting to do stuff like that, it's, it's because they're concerned. They're concerned that there might be an equalizer goal before the half. Definitely looks like the Demons are content One minute. One minute to try remaining. and just flip the field here. Understanding the offensive problems the Cardinals have had. Demons have scored two going this way and they continue to stall here as Cardinals have to go the full length of the field in 30 seconds you know I think um, time is running out now so that makes this very difficult but you know had they maybe won that challenge there in that back corner and sent it up via long ball they had so many black jerseys up there on their half. They could have had a quick transition and turnover. Only 10 seconds here to go. It's either Ellie take May's a big, Stanford. long Hail Mary shot or let the time run out. And it's possible. I've actually scored from the half mark, believe it or not, in high school. It, but it was 100% a Hail Mary. So, uh, But here we are, you know, two to one at the half. Still great effort from both teams. And I think moving forward, it's... Cardinals looking for a goal to at least tie it they're gonna have to go now into the wind yep that pretty much means just keeping the ball on the ground playing into feet trying not to uh work with too many chips going forward now on the flip side uh the lady demons have had quite a few breakaways already as it is you can Let's tell they have some forward. speed up top and so now that they have this win to their advantage it might really create some issues for the cardinal back line we're underway here now in the second half. The defending Southland Conference champions 
lead here, two to one. Pick to defend their title in the preseason poll. Last year they won not only the regular season, but that tournament championship where they played UIW to a 1-0 win. UIW picked to finish fourth. Just hasn't turned out the way they had hoped for as they will win, lose, or draw, finish eighth out of nine in the Southland. As you could see, that last clearance there from Coffrin, um, it didn't get quite as far. It bent out, went out of bounds, and, and that's because she has the wind against her there. So looking like here that the Cardinals are just going to have to take a minute to adjust, but we've got development going and then adding another corner to the sheet for the Lady Demons. This will be their fifth corner upcoming as Nicole Henry this time gets that one deflected off of Eve Clarkson. Fantastic work from her, just beating two defenders. You can tell she's got speed and as we had mentioned, you know, that's exactly what you want to have up top and with the wind behind your back. Her twin sister, Natalie Henry, to take the corner off her left foot, serves it in, goes for that back post and off a cardinal there. And it'll get a corner kick from the opposite side this time. Yep, nice play in, just went a little far backside, almost had it hit the chest of a Lady Demon. It's hard when your momentum is going a certain way to, to try to do something with a ball like that. But still a good service in, no doubt. Wind blew that flag to the ground. So Gracie Armstrong picks it up before Sending that ball dangerously towards that back post again and just unable to find a Lady Demon there. Yes, both fantastic back-to-back -back services. As you can see, just look at the speed going through there. I mean, definitely a dangerous ball there for the Cardinal back line. 6-0 advantage in corners for the Lady Demons. Lead the, not only the Southland, but the NCAA in corners per game. Averaging just over eight corners a game, 132 on the entire year, and unable to do anything on that one as the Cardinals will have a goal kick. And they've un been unable to get it into the demon half of the field because of this wind. Yep, as you can see here, the ball is, is dying before it even gets to the half field mark. Coffrin, typically her punts can at least get to the half. And you know, it's just something that you have to adjust to and change to. And, and so it's not so easy whenever you you know, have to take a goal kick or even a large service out of the back to clear the ball. That's why there's so much of a wind advantage. Demon still applying pressure here, up a goal. And yet another corner. Good job this time by Deanna Hillhorst with a slide tackle. She's one of those players who's been really good at standing up the ball, reading the ball, keeping her eyes on the ball, which is not such an easy thing. Exactly what you want from an outside back and a very clean tackle there as well. And considering the way the ball was going, I think that was her best case scenario on that one. So fantastic work there from Hill Horse. Nicole Henry gives the ball to her twin sister, Natalie Henry, another good service continuing to attack that back post. That one unable and cleared away by the Cardinals. Still trying to clear this one. 
been dangerous on the entire side of the field. Unable to get it past that halfway mark. Another look at this service in. Not a bad placement there. Just had Eve Clarkson getting on the end of it with this one. Or that last cross, rather. Cardinals now first time to get it across the halfway mark. But can't control it long enough as the Demons will have a throw in now. As we mentioned, this was a rematch of last year's title game. Northwestern took that one 1-0 one with a goal in the 62nd minute by Faith Adams giving the Demons their first Southland Conference Tournament Championship since 2005. And they won the previous meeting this year 1-0 for the conference opener for both teams. And a good shot there off the left foot of number 16, Emma Fernandez. Great save there from Margaret Coffrin just to get it off the post, just to deflect it off the crossbar and then off the football crossbar, giving the goal kick for the Demons. Nice single touch drive there and great work there from Coffrin just palming the ball up. Yeah, it went out of bounds, but hey, way better than being in a goal. And, and when the ball is coming at you so fast, I mean, look at that force behind that ball driven, you know, and, and then especially with the wind and from distance, it's really hard to do that on the first touch and to keep it low and on frame. And so fantastic work there as well from the Demons. Natalie Henry goes near post this time on the corner kick. Comes up unsuccessful. Not getting to the goal before bending in and out of bounds. This wind is really killing the goal kick from Margaret Coffrin, only able to get it to about the 40 yard line. Another left foot and off the side post. Gracie Armstrong with a left foot almost on frame. Wow, in class they say saved by the bell. In this case, we say saved by the post. That was a close call, and as you can see, the entire goal shook. There's a lot of power behind that hit. Lucky for the Cardinals, it went just a little too left. And what a breakthrough, man. Had there not been a cut there, she might have had a shot on goal. I thought she was going to take on all three for a minute there. Here's a replay. Takes a touch inside, hits it with the left, and man right into the post but that definitely would have that if that goal had gone in that definitely would have been an arrow in the heart for UIW but another chance here kicking that ball in as you can see both teams set up accordingly getting really compact there in that half of the field save there from Coffrin juggled it a little bit but just taps it out to herself and able to make yet another save here. That was a nice punt there across the half line. Wind might have died for a minute, it looks like, helping the Cardinals to get across the half. Turn it over there. Melissa Bailey unable to maintain possession. Another look at this last Shot on goal. Bobbled enough, but stopped it just in time. Tell taking a little bit more chances outside that 18 when you're with the wind. Sometimes a bobble is okay when you have a ton of space around you. There was wasn't a single player near her, so. It's okay to take kind of a, a 
push out and then and then to just grab it a little more securely with your hands there. And you know there's a lot of speed coming from that ball so far out. And so I think Coffrin, you know, despite the two goals against, has still had an impressive performance so far. Cardinals tried to reverse the field there. And Deanna Hillhorst unable to track it down before going out of bounds. Cardinals were able to hold their own in the first half. Of unable to maintain possession of the ball here to start the second half. There they are. They got some Tiki Taka building out of the back. That's some great movement and work there. You know, sometimes you just have to take the air balls out of the factor, but unfortunate there. Wasn't a ton going on in the attacking third in that moment, so sometimes all you can do is send it up, up the side of the field, but it's almost looking like it's turning into a bit of a crosswind, which I think is why it was so hard for Diana Hillhorse to get on the end of that ball earlier that they, that they played across the field. Great run there from Diana, moving that ball up the field. Coming near side, plays it into the box, into a demon head. Strike there from Sanford. And that'll be run out of bounds, but a corner kick, first of the game for the Cardinals. Check out here this replay. You've got that service in, nice chip in, hoping someone gets on the end of it. That header redirected, she takes the shot. I think that's the wise move, it just deflected, didn't make it through the traffic. And then of course you had the Cardinals there swarming, trying to get that second ball. But here we are now, let's see how this happens. So Need Duffy goes quickly into the box off a of left foot and trying to go back post. And Wowza. unable to find the back post. I thought she might've had that one. Nice little quick one-two there, but the ball was missing some pace, but fantastic step into space, putting it on her left foot, just went a little wide. But, um, you know, I think for her positioning and the way she set herself up, I think she was right to try to go for that opposite upper 90. It just went a little shy of the goal there. Demons now get it. Unable to get that one through. Olivia Dragicevic wanting a foul called there. Referee says play on. Cardinals now low ball into the box. Taken back out. They go big ball up to Sierra Wanamaker and just nothing on that header. Yeah, just not enough pace there. And then of course again, win working to the disadvantage. I mean, maybe had there not been some win there, might have gone a little further, but as we saw earlier, that worked for the Demons earlier. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, I think you can see here that the Cardinals are starting to get their momentum. You see them playing out of pressure really well, uh, moving the ball up. You can see where the Lady Demons have been a little more reactive, just at least in those few minutes. Here it is again, sending it to Sierra. I thought maybe she might also be off sides on that one, but yeah, just, just not enough power behind it. Not a ton you can do there when you have two black jerseys surrounding you either. It's really a, a one-touch chance. And usually headers from just inside the 18 aren't usually gonna get to the goal with much pace unless you've got some lead head and can put some big time power on that one. Right, you need a little bit more of a driven ball. You also have to get up high and meet the ball where it is and, and use your neck muscles and core strength to push that ball through, which I personally have never mastered. So, but there are some people out there who you think, how on earth did they get power behind that ball? And it's all coming from like their core and, and how high they get and, um, Ball into the box, trying to find Armstrong. Coffrin comes up, plays it cleanly. Just over 30 minutes left in this one. Northwestern State with a two to one advantage. 
Trying to add on here with Armstrong and unable to get a shot on goal as two Cardinals flew in to either side of her to avoid, to avoid that threat. Nice little turn and you can see the effort there trying to get that ball up, but met by the Lady Demons working to settle the ball, control it out of the back. Just a little bit of back and forth here. I think the name of the game with weather conditions like this is, you know, who can settle it first? Who can get the ball on the ground? Who can get something developing and going? And, you know, I, I, we've seen a, a couple of times here those services down the side of the field from the Cardinals, and they're just not totally successful because they don't have the wind behind them. And it gives that outside back from the Lady Demons a chance to, you know, size it up and figure out where she needs to be. And so I think the, the name of the game here for the Cardinals is keeping this ball on the ground. Strong services in, but also have to hand it to the Lady Demons. They're doing a fantastic job of staying compact. They find Wanamaker now, and that one's deflected out of bounds. Goal kick coming for the Cardinals. A replay here, serving that ball in, chipping it in. Ellie Mae Stanford on that service in, just led Sierra Wanamaker just a tad too far, but Wanamaker still able to earn themselves a corner kick. A header there just missed from Eve Clarkson, a right foot of Wanamaker deflected by Henry. Goalie comes out and big tackle there. And it's gonna be a goal, it's, excuse me, a corner kick. Wow, so many opportunities there here. Check out the service in. On the head of Eve Clarkson, I thought that itself could have gone and you have Sierra there trying to settle it before she can take that hit and just too much traffic, but man, also Sierra coming back with that collision with the keeper. Hannah Walsh, low driven corner, unable to find Sanford. Goalkeeper Chloe DeShazer, definitely not happy. And she's gotten beat up every time she's come off her line. Yes, you've and, got it. And a referee that has yet to call a penalty anytime she's had contact. Really and truly, I mean, she has done a fantastic job. Look at this challenge here, Sierra, relentless. She is relentless, and man, she's just really putting it all on the line for her team right now, especially, you know, such a key player for the squad, just coming out time and time again, sacrificing her body for the team. Demons with the throw in. Unable to maintain possession there is Armstrong. Gracie Armstrong have to differentiate with this demon team. Having four sets of sisters. For the Cardinals, I want to give Abigail credit Wilson. to the right for player. Because either and way, the family Ethan is doing Riley. well when one of them is for doing well, seven, you know? This Melissa is true. Bailey. Pair of substitutions come. For the Cardinals. We've got Abigail Wilson back in the mix. As Sunid, well as Tegan Browning. See, Sunid Duffy comes out of the ball game. Great read there by the Cardinals. Oh. Hannah Walsh able to win the ball and just unable to find anyone on the other side of this pass. Great read there, though, again. And, man, if, if Wanamaker had picked up on that, but that's almost impossible. There's so many players there, and it's a tricky one. 
Again, handing it to the, the Lady Demons, I think a lot of these teams that are wildly successful, it's because they move as a unit both on offense and defense. They're just extremely connected. And, and if you look at where the ball bounces anywhere, it doesn't take a ton of time before there are multiple black jerseys surrounding the ball. And, you know, that type of cohesiveness on a team is really and truly what wins championships, especially when the stakes are higher and they're up against really intense teams. It's their ability to stay compact and then expand when they need to. This is a Northwestern State team and defense that's only given up one more than one goal on one occasion. So it's not undoable for UIW, but not many times the Demons have given up two or more goals as they are set to take another corner kick. This time, Gracie Armstrong take it off her right foot, sends it in. Headed away by Eve Clarkson. And either way, a whistle will give the Cardinals the ball. See this replay again here, playing it in just backside. Eve really has a knack for getting on the end of it. I mean, I would love to see the statistics on just how many corners she has been able to place her head on the end of because, I mean, whether it's middle of the goal or back post, I mean, she just seems to be there. She really has a knack for reading it as it's coming in and, and uh, you know, being a competitor when it does. Eve Clarkson, first team all Southland Conference player in her last game in a UIW uniform. One of six seniors playing their final game today. Trying to go out on top, down two to one. Demons threatening here. Ball into the box and unable is Olivia Dragicevic. Had a golden opportunity. But fantastic effort of an overlap run there from Nicole Henry, placing it in, deflected, and man, an opportunity. Again, she might go to bed thinking about tonight. You know, if you think about, you know, that deflection versus the one that the Cardinals were able to take advantage of, sometimes it's just in those moments you know, keeping the nerves down, opening up your body, playing the easy volley in. Um, just an unlucky touch there. Having nine goals on the year for Drogisevic, I think she'll still go to <laughs> bed feeling okay. Unless, <laughs> unless that goal is one of her goals is to get that golden boot where she sits just a goal behind, having nine goals on the year, one goal behind. I don't know, when you, you talk about these players who are leading the pack in goals, I think, you know, they are so good at what they do because they hold themselves accountable in that way, you know? So when you see a player who is notorious in front of the goal and, and they do something like that, it's almost worse than someone who shows up to the goal and is like, yeah, well, maybe shooting wasn't my strong, shoot, strong you know, suit anyway. So, you know, who knows? Could go both ways. <laughs> Plus, you got, you got the lead two to one. I think she'll still be okay <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah, I think if they win this one, it'll be, it'll be a-okay. She'll be happy, but a little sad at the same time. She's getting the ball now, trying to make a move. Great tackle there. Bailey Great. Moyer. Great tackle and a clean tackle at that. Has the Cardinal bench fired up. Trying to will their team on the field to another goal. Another look at the Bailey Moyer Ooh. tackle. Had a nice leg extended. Again, a clean tackle, but I can't help but cringe a little when I think about knee injuries and in soccer and, you know, how a lot of those happen from extending the leg just like that. But luckily, everybody's walked out unscathed. Good to go and kind of hand it to this Cardinal team. I mean, they're up against a force with these Lady Demons and they are really holding their own out there. I mean, 
yes, there's a bit of domination happening, but I wouldn't even say domination. I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, I, I, I think they're doing really and truly a great job this afternoon of just staying with it, playing their game and, and playing a, a pretty game. When you talk about a Northwestern team that is very balanced in scoring, I mean, 12 players have scored goals, 17 different players have also recorded points for the Lady Demons most since 2019 where there was 17 different or 14 different players and 18 recorded points. And when you look at this team, you get the headliner in Olivia Dragicevic, but like we've mentioned, you've got Gracie Armstrong, you've got Nicole Henry, you've got Natalie Henry, Emma Fernandez, you've got plenty of depth and options you can go to, which forces a team like UIW to not just rely on attacking and making sure Olivia Dragicevic is marked. you got to make sure the entire team is marked. Right. You can't just rely on shutting down one player. You have to focus on the whole squad. And, you know, I think you could even see it in the warm-up as well, just the technical ability of each individual player, just the solid passes, the the movement that they had going in warm-up. It you know, they're, they're a good team, um, but you can never underestimate a team, which is exactly what head coach Stuart Gore said going into this. I mean, look at this. It's only a 2-1 game. It's not like a 4-0 or something. You know, it's, it's both teams are still very much in it. Yeah, 18 plus minutes to go, but only a single goal differential. And just seeing some of this play development and the way the Cardinals are building out of the back, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't have a couple of more chances, but it's really not in their best interest to keep that ball in the air, as you could see there. Twenty mile an hour winds that they're going into, trying to find an equalizer against a team that has only given up two or more goals once this year. A couple substitutions now for the Cardinals. Entering for the Cardinals, number 24, Shanae Duffy. Shanae Duffy and Melissa Hannah Bailey Walsh. back into the ball game for seven, Hannah Melissa Walsh Bailey. and Lauren and Miller. Number 20, Lauren Miller. Had there not been substitutions and stoppage in play on this one, I think it would have been a good idea for the Cardinals to try to build out of the back. So maybe if there's another turnover there in the back, just focusing on those outside wingers getting really, really wide. It looks like they were able to work out a pressure there. Always helpful when the ball restarts on the opposite end of the field. Now a substitution for the Lady Demons. Number seven, Paige Armstrong will come in for number nine, Olivia Dragicevic. So now it'll be the Armstrong twins at the top of the attack for the Demons. Ball goes to Gracie there. Able to maneuver around a couple Cardinals and tries to find her sister. Just deflected out by Eve Clarkson. Great idea, but better read there by Eve. You can see here the wheels are turning. You can see the direction of the run and fantastic work there from Eve. Just delaying, forcing the ball, not stabbing. Demons win the ball here in the attacking third, trying to make something happen. And a good tackle there by Clarkson. And also good work there by Ellie May for just not letting them get away and get past her. I mean, she really fought for that one. Delayed the attack, gave Eve a chance to come in and, and take it. Ooh. 
And whistle there. And a card. Excuse me, no card there. Yeah, definitely was going for the ball there. It's just when you throw one body into the other, <laughs> someone's going to fall. But definitely was going for ball. Tegan Browning. Was the Cardinal called for the foul? Jamie, Jamie Hayes to take the free kick. Got all the way to the goal. Tried to go towards that near post. Definitely some big leg plus some help from the wind there. Yeah, nice effort on that one. And, you know, that is the luxury that you have when you have the wind on your back. You can take shots from pretty far out. And the wind will help you out. Sierra Wanamaker wins it. Tries to feed it there to an attacking Duffy. Just another deflection there by the Demons. Haynes there again. Cardinals trying to find an equalizer here. In their final match of the regular season on senior day. Trying to send six seniors away off the right note. Throwing now for the Lady Demons. I think in the final moments of, you know, your final game as a senior, it's so much more than, you know, winning the game. It's it's about leaving it all on the field. And I think you can see that coming through for a lot of these Cardinals, this bittersweet moment slowly approaching for them. Um, you know, and then, of course, a, feel, what feels like a David and Goliath situation, you have David hanging in there with Goliath. This time, Paige Armstrong unable to get anything on that swing. It's in this moment that I really would have liked to see these outside backs just check to the chalk really low, build out of the back in that way instead of having to fight the wind and, you know, creating a possible turnover. I think sometimes, you know, they haven't done that a ton in this game. And if they had done that really quickly, it could possibly catch the demons Entering off guard. Issue, number 14, Donaldson. Substitution for the Board demons. Number, 22, Henry. number 14, Jalen Donaldson in for Natalie Henry. Donaldson, one of those grad Grad students, they trade experience for experience. Great run there from Paige Armstrong. Hustling to that one and almost adding another goal. Yeah, she got on the end of it and, and had a strike there. And luckily for Coffrin, she was in the position to receive it. But, uh, wow, it's getting really physical there in the middle of the field. Again, something that typically upticks in the final minutes of the game here. But, yeah, I think we knew the, the battle was going to be in winning those 50-50s in the midfield. Here it is. Chip over. She's running onto it, unsuspecting. Here she comes again. And Coffrin just sends that one out of bounds. <laughs> Scoring got started by Northwestern State in the 10th minute. Off the left foot of Natalie Henry sent a service into the box off a corner and Haley Field was able to head it in. And that was followed by a penalty kick from Gracie Armstrong. 
off a penalty in the box there. Olivia Dragicevic. Handball there. Drew a yellow card from Eve Clarkson. And they thought they were going to get into the half with a 2-0 lead. And instead, Sierra Wanamaker was able to find the back of the net in the 39th minute. And that's where we stand now. Under 10 minutes left in this match. UIW still trying to find an equalizer. Only two shots on the day compared to the Demon Six. All six which have been on goal for the Demons. And they'll get a corner kick here. Gracie Armstrong heads to that far corner. Set to take their 10th corner of the game. If you can see in the wide shot, you still have three defenders camping back, even midfielders. Not a ton of players running into the box on this one, which tells us that the Lady Demons are still very concerned about a possible quick turnaround or breakaway from the Cardinals. Something that possibly could have happened early on, but again, a good clearance here from the Cardinals. Still some pretty good placement from the ball coming in off that corner. But it's interesting to see the Lady Demons taking such a defensive stance despite hammering the Cardinals here in the second half in the attacking third. Henry with the ball in the box. Now Armstrong with the left foot. The young Paige Armstrong unable to get enough on that one to get past Coffrin. Good work there from the young arm strong, but Coffrin able to read and pick up on that one, got nice and low, kept it in her possession. Good work as a keeper there. And here come the Cardinals now, needing a goal. Switching the field, there's an option there. I think this is, you know, what happens. Take a few, one too many touches and then by that time you get closed down and you just don't want to make the wrong move at that point. So you just play the safe ball, you bring it back, you recycle it, not a bad idea. But there was somebody on on the opposite side of the field. This replay here, got Paige taking it to her left. Good look, just maybe need a little more power or pace. Good solid keeping there by Coffrin as well. Five saves on the day. Had nine on Friday versus Commerce. And the offsides flag goes up as Wanamaker was behind the Demons there before that ball came to her. Almost looks like more of a, a foul possibly because of the challenge, I'm not Totally sure on that one, but great building out of the back. Lots of composure coming out of the back line and just taking their time moving up the field instead of just sailing it forward. I think a lot of times when you see, you know, a sense of urgency start to pick up, these players might just start sending long ball after long ball, and then it just becomes a lot of back and forth. And, you know, so good on the Cardinals there Entering to just kind of maintain composure and, and move it up the way they can. For number 12, Mass Debbie substitution Wells. for both teams. And number two, Hallie Griffin. And for number 16, Tegan Browning and Abigail, Abigail Wilson come off for the Entering Cardinals. For the Cardinals. Number As 10, Hannah Wong. Delaney Wells in for number 23, Abigail Wilson. And number comes 20, off Lauren for Butler. the Lady Demons as well as Emma Ian Fernandez. Running. Just over five minutes remaining. Lady Demons still holding on to a two to one advantage. Service far post finds a cardinal head. 
Still unable to clear it away. Demons on the attack. And a little too much on that service in. Another look at this long ball. Just good job there by Eve Clarkson to head that one away. Or else Paige Armstrong would have been there with the chance to put this one out of reach. Nice dummy there. Good awareness of where your teammates are on the field. You can see they're trying to switch it back, looking for an opening. It's a neat Duffy now. Sierra Wanamaker. Just unable to get anything going. Uh -oh. Throw in now for the Cardinals as referee will check on Ellie Mae Sanford. She's okay. Looking like she's trying to walk it off there. It's always so hard when you only got a couple minutes left. You know, you don't want to stop any momentum that you might have, so. Demons now. Long ball there, and the flag goes up off sides. Haley Griffin got a little bit of a head start. Just behind the Cardinal defense. Good step there from Nicole Henry intercepting that pass. Clock now ticking, just over three minutes remaining. Cardinals still trying to find another goal. Trying to find a little bit more movement. Wanting to send the seniors out on a positive note. Always so hard to do there when there's just a sea of black surrounding these white jerseys. I mean. Another ball there for Griffin. She's able to corral it. Gets a shot on goal. And Cofferin able to handle that one. Nice service there from Cofferin as well. Putting her Cardinal team back on the front foot. Caroline Hilliard sniffs out. The pass far side clears it out of bounds. Cardinals now going near side to Hillhorst. Can she get something going? And a great defensive play there. Nicole Henry with a huge tackle. As the clock hits under two minutes. Nice dummy there from Hillhorse. You could see what she was trying to do there. Just couldn't quite get on the end of it. Possibly could have had two defenders beat there on that one, but you know, sometimes you can't help but root for the underdog in these situations. Only a minute plus to go and throw in there goes into the box. Walsh is able to find it and right into the chest of DeShazer. Huge catch by DeShazer as she was able to secure a very good ball there by Walsh, driven there with much pace. Yes, great driven ball, but she also had a teammate on the backside. Maybe had it been driven to the backside she could have run on to that one, but again, still a great opportunity there for the Cardinals. Looks like it might be at just a little bit too late. Clock goes to 30, 30 seconds left. Cardinals must go the full length of the field and find the back of the net. And Time. injury there. Referee's going to stop the clock and wave towards the athletic trainer. 
You can watch this replay here, see this collision go down, both going up for the ball and both hitting heads there. Hannah Walsh and Madison Murphy just bonking heads there. 21 seconds In going into the wind. Is there any magic left 10, in the Cardinals season? And Ten, nine, as eight, time seven, cl six, ticks five, under five four, seconds, three, one last two, heave, one. and the buzzer will sound, and that will be the end of tonight's match and season for the Cardinals. Cardinals Northwestern State escapes San Antonio with a two to one victory over Incarnate Word. And Katie 